Sean, isn't it true to say the scientists have been trying to figure out this puzzle for some time now? Why monogamy developed in humans and why in some cultures it's still the norm? Yes, that's right, Colette. And recently I spoke to a scientist who thinks he and his team of researchers have found the answer. I'm Kit Opie. I'm an evolutionary anthropologist and I'm a research fellow at University College London. And Kit had an interesting statistic about the prevalence of polygyny throughout the world. And a quick word on terminology here. Polygyny is the practice of a man having multiple wives at the same time. Polyandry is where women have several husbands. And polygamy, with an M, is the overarching term describing the practice of men or women having several spouses at the same time. 85% of cultures worldwide allow and condone polygyny. And this is usually in areas where there is inequality of wealth and it, it allows the rich men, the elite men, to build up considerable wealth and therefore to afford a number of wives. But monogamy is unusual amongst mammals. So only about 5% of mammal species are monogamous, whereas amongst bird species, it's about 90%. But Kit told me that monogamy is much more common in primates. And because humans are a classic primate species, he and his team studied their evolution to find out how monogamy came about. And they found it had to do with infanticide. In primates, males often kill unrelated offspring. But because they have large brains, their young suckled longer and were helpless for much longer. So we can say that monogamy evolves in primates because of infanticide. And it seems very likely that this would have been the reason that monogamy evolved in, in the human lineage too. But later on then, it seems that there was a switch from this monogamous setup to polygyny. And Kit believes it had a lot to do with the development of agriculture. Agriculture allowed for accumulation of wealth and therefore inequality of wealth so that some men would have had access to a lot of land or a, a lot of uh, cattle or sheep. And in those cases, those men would be able to afford to look after and keep more than one wife. So it, seemed, it seems likely that the advent of agriculture also meant the breakdown of ubiquitous monogamy with the elites in these early farming societies becoming polygynous. And Christianity also comes into play here, doesn't it? Uh, especially in Europe, in terms of the development of monogamy. Yes, because we, what we see is that up until Christianity started to spread, we see polygyny in most, at, at least as far as the Indo-European family of languages is concerned, we see polygyny across all of the cultures. Then we start to see a bit of a variant on polygyny where they had a monogamous marriage which was the, the way in which wealth was passed down from one generation to another, but then men keeping numbers of concubines. So it's still a sort of polygynous setup, but with one favoured wife, perhaps. And it seems as though the spread of Christianity was to take that model across the rest of Europe, the places that the Roman Empire hadn't managed to get to. And it was only much later, so we see now still records up until about a thousand years ago where there were still records of, of debates and disputes in countries such as Ireland, such as Germany, where they were trying to decide whether polygyny should be outlawed or not. And in the end, it seems as though that was what was decided. So polygyny was outlawed in many European countries, and then whenever those those people or those countries expanded into other areas of the globe. They took this particular form of monogamy into those other cultures. Would it be true to say that monogamy has got us to this point? It served us very well in our human history, but now maybe we can choose how we want to live. Yeah, it's a, ve it's a very good system. It's a good system in protecting infants, not only from infanticide, but 
from predators and other external dangers. And it's also a very good way of providing for infants in terms of food and education, uh, all of those kinds of things. But in advanced economies, it may well be that it's not necessary or not necessary to the same extent. Perhaps it's possible now for people to experiment with different forms and different family setups.